the boogeyman of this format <laughs> moving into these cards. What's up guys, Terry back with another deck profile for you guys. This time, something a little new, something a little more fun than just showing you old and soul and uh, you know, the decks that dominated the last format. For today, I am going to show you one of my personal favorite decks that we've been messing around with, and that is Water Merlin. Um, and I'm just gonna, you know what, I'll put her here the whole time. She can just sit there while I show you what's going on. So we're gonna be playing Water. I'm gonna go through, as always, the material deck first, then we'll go over the deck and talk a little bit about that. So um, this deck, obviously we go Water Spirit. We play Lorraine. Um, some people play Rye, wanna go that way. I really, really like having access to Warrior cards early. Um, now something that's a little spicy and a little cool is we um, have two level twos. So we play a Lorraine Blade Master, and we also play Merlin. Um, I'll explain how we really get around doing this. I'm sure you can already figure it out with the Innervates, but if we're playing against a really fast aggressive deck and we need to sweep early um, or just draw some cards, or maybe we have Innervates in hand, um, then we can D-level, draw some more cards after killing something and drawing some cards. But the name of the deck, we're trying to get to level three Merlin to do some Crux shenanigans. Um, once we get there, we have access to a few different swords. Um, we do have a Crux package, so Sword of Avarice obviously draws us a ton of cards. Drawn Blade doesn't need a description, just lets us draw. Sword of Seeking is coming out with our Lorraine level one. We can use it early to help with board control or, you know, bring it back get that true sight late game, which is kind of relevant sometimes. And Erendite is the key card in our deck. When the game goes very, very, very late, this card can come out and we can win it, sometimes one-shotting our opponent. So with that being said, that card is an absolute all-star. Um, after those, we have three more spots. We have GCR because we're a control deck and we need cards, especially when we play a six mana sweep card that we got to have the cards in hand for it helps to draw more we play tariff ring which helps us just outlast and make it a little bit further into the game and then everybody's favorite deer the majestic spirit and this card when you get into late game giving your merlin spell shroud as well as having any damage that goes there um it's kind of a crazy one-two punch after the material deck, I'm just going to jump right into this. There's a lot of cool cards. There's a lot of things going on. So first, I'm going to start with actually the creature suite. Um, so other than the three dungeon guides, which I think is pretty self-explanatory when we have so many champ cards in our material deck, um, I am going to show you the Frost Sisters. And these eight cards do work. Frostworn Paladin, everybody knows how strong this card can be. We play a lot of floating memory. We're usually drawing off it and then getting a 3-4 intercept body that also draws us a card. And then once we get to level two um, and, and beyond, this Frostbinder Apostle deals with so many threats in this game. The minus four health to a minion that's tapped, an ally that's tapped, it just kills it right there. That's how uh, this works. Um, when your defense stat equals zero, technically that ally dies. So this is basically a removal spell that then gets to sit there and soak up an attack. So these two cards, very, very good. Um, then I'll go into the cards that kind of let us stall out. Um, the control cards, if you will. Um, first off, I've got a new one, Fast Cure. And in this deck, early on, especially when you're playing cards quickly, uh, you do get to gain four pretty often. And at worst, it's a way to play around raccoons and we need our floating memory. So being able to do fast, Floating memory, even if we don't heal always, is pretty strong. Um, right after that, we play two Fracturize. Um, honestly, things like opponents, Arendites, uh, we can deal with Tamers that are trying to get levels up or sweep protection. We can kill their Effigy of Gaia's. We can deal with most things, weapons and items, which is really, really strong. And on top of that, I would probably play this card even if it didn't have the text at the bottom, which is floating memory. And it's not class. So this is floating memory that we can use all the time, not just in a class bonus. Um, 
Next, we play three Frostbinds. You know, the boogeyman of this format <laughs> moving into these cards, a counterspell into the game of Grand Archive. Um, it's incredibly strong. Even if you don't have it, your opponents have to play around it constantly. Um, the card's just very, very powerful. And we're going to be seeing this effect for a long, long time. So when you're playing and sitting across from a water player, make sure that you're prepared for Frostbinds. Lastly, in the main, we play two Revitalizing Cleanses. This is just another way to stall out the game, gain us some life, as well as draw us cards. You guys know the card. It's pretty solid. Gets the job done. The next stack of cards I'm going to show you is mostly just some more Floating Memory. And first off is Chilling Touch. Early on, helps us tempo, move into what we need. It's a very strong card to play and then go into... Um, Frostborn Paladin on, uh, on a turn one. Uh, very, very strong, slows down your opponent. You guys know how it works. We play two of the new Taunt, Stalwart Shieldmate. This is just another, it gives you another turn, at least one less attack that has to go into these and then turns into Floating Memory. Super strong. Sometimes you can go a little bit aggressive or late game if your opponent is sitting there um, like you saw if you watched our games between me and Caben, where he had a giant green beast on the board that could just swing and kill my deer. These guys hitting the board, he has to have something else to kill it. And if they don't, then your deer just gets to run free. And that's what deer like to do. So we also play Savage Slash. This is a nice early removal spell. And then late game with this, it's another way to attack if we don't have any swords left or you know, just wanna swing for four to help deal with the board with our Merlin effect on top of it. And then on top of that, it's more floating memory. And because Merlin is warrior mage, all of these warrior cards become more active, even when we're not level two, no longer a mage level two Merlin. And then we play two Scribe the Skies, which late game can dig for whatever answer we need. Early on, it's just a you know one for one basically. We, we even out. Sometimes you just got to dig a little deeper to get through it. Lastly, I play two title sweeps in the main. This is kind of the bread and butter of how this deck works. And I'm actually going to bring out the other cards that why we do this. Um, Innervate Knowledge. And this card is very, very strong. It is an addition cost to activate, de-level your champion, and recover five. So we have to have at least five damage on us. And it's slow speed, so we have to do this on our turn. But if we go level two Lorraine to title sweep an opponent, get rid of them, and then next turn, we're able to de-level back down to level one Lorraine, which would then let us go into Merlin to get to our end game and also draw two additional cards to help us get there. It's very strong. And title sweep on top of it, floating memory, which is very strong. The last card that I'm going to show you in the main deck, two water barriers. We do have the mage floating memory bonus, which is super strong. It also just deals with big hits. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the sideboard, which is just another title sweep. Two more water barriers, two resolute stands just for those hyper aggressive decks, those low to the ground assassin decks. It's just another way to survive. And then I have three blanches for Rye or spell damage decks that want to go upstairs. So all that being said, the only things that I would change right away in testing so far, the main deck, honestly, I love where it's at. This deck lets us play a lot of two ofs, a lot of three ofs because of how many cards we draw, how many times we're milling through. We're able to um, go back and grab things. Oh, and also, that's not all the cards in the deck. I lied to your guys' face. I had stacks that were in a weird spot. Um, so I'm going to talk about the sideboard in the middle, which is a little weird. But the only other card I would think about adding would be actually Avalon. Because in control mirrors, it can be very, very strong, and we could definitely mill out our opponents. Um, Crux package, pretty straightforward. Ascensions, Crux site, you know how those guys work. Um, something that people may not have thought about, I'm sure they have, but Incarnate Majesty late game um, with Crux sites is pretty crazy. We can bring our deer out, use it. If they do deal with it, we just Crux site back in an Incarnate Majesty bring back our deer for less, and we end the game pretty soon after. Um, I thought I was missing cards because this is the engine that lets our deck tick. Something fell off. So Idle Thoughts, Fractal of Insight, right? We get to set the top of our deck. 
which in this deck actually works really, really well. We play three Sync into Oblivion and two Tide Diviner. There was a couple times in my match against Cape and you saw me Tide Diviner for double digits. Um, getting to put a bunch of floating memory into the yard, get a body, draw a card, and then next turn bring an Erendite and get rid of five, six floating memories that we may have hit um, or that we've built up over time, then end the game is very, very strong. Sink into Oblivion just lets us deal with all those bad idle thoughts cards that may be there or stuck there that we couldn't get rid of. Or if we set ourselves up with floating memory and we want to be able to turbo out levels or cards from our material deck. So sorry that that was a little mixed up, but I hope that it kind of made sense to y'all. Um, the deck's great. I know people are really excited for Water Merlin. I hope you guys build this deck, test it out, have as much fun with it as I have. And if you do, definitely comment below and let me know. I'd love to hear what cards you're trying. Maybe some things that you thought aren't great in my deck or you'd like to see changed. I'd love to try them. So until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.